Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Test Studio. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create that logo audio visualizer DaVinci Resolve using a MIDI file. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve right now on the edit page, and we're gonna start by bringing here the music that we want to be represent on screen. So right now I've brought in a wave, but it can be a MP3 for example. And then we're gonna bring a new fusion composition in our timeline by going over to effect, fusion composition, drag that in. And then we're gonna extend that fusion composition to the lens of all music. So I'm just gonna stretch that and right here. Now we're gonna go over to fusion to create that effect, but it's very important that the fusion composition and the music are perfectly in sync uh, and perfectly line up like I just did, uh, because we cannot bring actual sound in a fusion. So we're gonna create that effect using a MIDI file to get the data of the music, but the actual music that will be exported in the video will be this MP3 or wave audio file that is in the edit page. So again, very, very important that the fusion composition and the music are perfectly lined up. Now let's move over to fusion. Once in fusion, I'm gonna start by bringing a new background area and linking the output of that background to the media out. Then I'm gonna reduce the alpha channel down to zero and we're gonna bring our logo. So here I'm just gonna search for my logo and bring it in the working area and then linking the output of that logo to the background one. In our case, we're using the DaVinci Resolve logo, but it could be any media, that could be a shape, that could be an image, that could be an icon, another logo, etc. Then we're gonna select our media in one, it shift space on our keyboard, and here we're gonna search for the transform node and bring that in. Now let's right click on the size and go to modify with MIDI extractor. That prompt open here the modifier, and now we have access to some new parameter. So here I'm just gonna expand my inspector so we can see everything. And as you can see right now, the logo disappeared because basically the data is at zero since there is no input for the music to be represented. So we're gonna need to import here a MIDI file, not an MP3, not a wave, but a MIDI file. That's a file that DaVinci will be able to extract the data from to then use the data to help us represent visually our logo. So you'll have to convert your file online first. So there is this website, Audio Converter, that I've been using lately uh, that I like. Uh, not all websites are working properly. I've tried different websites and some are not really working. Uh, at least DaVinci doesn't recognize the file that they are produced. Uh, this one is working for me. There is other one out there, but I will link this one in the description below. So I'll just upload my file and just convert it. Now we can click convert and now we can just download. Now once in resolve, we can just go over to browse and we can load our MIDI file. As you can see, now since DaVinci Resolve got some data to use, uh, there is the logo appearing back on screen. But as you can see, it doesn't look very good. We're going to need to make some adjustments to make it look nicer. The first one is going to be to go to combine event and here instead of most recent we're going to select sum but as you can see that's for result to really jacked up the overall size of our logo so we're going to reduce that by going to the result scale and here bringing from 1 to 0 0.1 think of the result scale as the size maximum that the logo can take so here as you can see if we scroll through it never go past that size if we wanted to increase that a little bit can just go here for example to 0 0.2 and then here will never pass that size so here uh, in my case i think just 0 0.1 is good now that we've set a maximum size i wanted to set a minimum size so here as you can see it just go down to zero and the logo kind of disappear uh, when the value is down we don't want that we want it to have like a value minimum so the logo stay on screen to do that we're gonna just hear the result offset and as you can see now, if we increase it, basically we're increasing the minimum size. So it will never just go down past that size. In my case, I'm gonna go with one. And if we play it, as you can see, we start to get somewhere. So now we have the minimum size set, we have the maximum size set, and therefore we have the vibration happening within only a certain range. Now, as you can see, however, that change is pretty harsh and sometimes is jumping quite a lot from uh, the minimum to the maximum. To adjust that, we can play around here with the result curve. Basically, if we reduce the result curve right there, we're gonna increase that jump. So here, as you can see, it's really jumping a lot from 
from the minimum to the maximum. And if we increase that result curve to the maximum, there is nothing happening. So basically, if you want the effect to be a bit less pronounced, you can just go up here with the result curve. And if you want that to be more pronounced, you can just reduce the result curve. So basically this slider will more or less act like an overall strength slider for this effect. In our case, I'm gonna bring it to two because in my opinion, it tends to look better between one to five because I'd rather having something that is slightly animated than too much. Uh, it looks a bit more natural, especially in that case with a logo where you want it to look a bit more like a speaker vibrating than a visualizer that have like really extreme behavior. Now, the last week that I will generally do is adding some motion blur to make it feel a bit more natural and increase a bit that vibration feeling. To do that, I'm going to go to the transform in tool and then here in setting and I'm going to toggle motion blur. I'm going to increase the quality to 10 because my computer can handle it. But if you cannot, two will be uh, good enough, I think. And if you want to increase the overall strength of the effect, you can just bring the shutter angle up. In my case, I'm simply gonna leave it like this and I'm happy with the final result. And now if we go back to the edit page and we start playing it, as you can see, we get our visualizer going on. The only thing though that you need to check is that sometimes for whatever reason, it's not full in sync. There is uh, something wrong with the timing. You can check that by going at the end of your song. And when the song is done, and basically you will realize that by here increasing a bit the fusion composition. And as you can see, even though there is no music, it's keep going on for like a few seconds. So the timing is not perfectly in sync. I've tried this with different songs. Sometimes it's in sync, sometimes it isn't. It's really it or miss. So in case that's not perfectly in sync, you can adjust that by going back to the Fusion page and then here go to Transform, go to Modifier, and then here I'm just gonna pin that so it stay on the inspector while I'm going back and forth between the edit page and the fusion page. And here you can adjust the time scale, which in our scenario will allow us to adjust the timing. It will basically increase or decrease the speed at which that data is read. In our case, because it's continuing a few seconds after the music is done, we're just gonna increase the time speed a little bit just to make it a bit quicker. So here I'm just gonna increase it just a tiny bit and then we can just Go back, play it again, take a look. Right now, as you can see, it's still playing a bit, but not as much. So we can go back again to the Fusion page, increase that again a tiny bit, then go back, play it. Here we go. Now when we're stopping, basically here, the visualizer is stopping as well. So now the timing is in sync. If we play it, as you can see, the visualizer right now is pretty strong, then it's decreasing, decreasing a bit more, until now where there is nothing happening and the visualizer is not moving anymore. And that's pretty much it. That's how to create that logo audio visualizer in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.